Our coverage continues now with Paula Tutman, who's been talking with the parents, the grandparents, the students. And Paula, so many families had to scramble this morning to arrange childcare today, and obviously they're worried what's going to happen for the rest of the week. Absolutely. And in fact, Karen, not five minutes ago, there was a school bus right here. It said Plymouth Educational District. A child got off that school bus, walked across the street, and walked home. That child went to school today. Her neighbors and her other uh, uh, neighbor children did not go to school today. And it really does create a huge group of complex problems. You do. You thank you. This morning, eight year old Kevin was making up his own math homework. Make my own math problems. You're gonna make your own math problems? Mm -hmm. No kidding. He thinks he wants to be a football player when he grows up, that or a math teacher. He's had several teacherless school days this year, and as a kid who likes to go to school, he's disappointed. It makes me mad because I like to do my subjects in school and not at home. His grandfather is angry, not because his grandson doesn't have school today, but because his grandson's teachers feel they have no other options. They're paying all these basketball players, football players, millions of dollars. And these people is out there trying to make sure your kids can learn and become somebody. And then they ain't not getting nothing, you know. This is what it looks like for parents, grandparents, and guardians today, stuck behind the rock and the hard places of having to make emergency plans for children, children falling behind other school districts, and empathy for teachers who, at the very least, should get paid for the work they do. Well, I have two um, girls that are in DPS. Uh, the one is at King, one is at Chrysler, and today, unfortunately, they aren't in school. Uh, and to no fault of their own, to no fault of the teacher's own, um, they're put in a situation where they have to go to extreme measures. So today, kids found other things to do, whether it was a pickup game of basketball, TV and an extra bowl of cereal. It was a million things except one, being in class on a day that they simply should be in class. However, it's just not that simple for the kids or their parents. I was happy because I don't have to stay behind, and she could be looking for houses for us, so we won't have to stay in the shelter all of our life. For Acacia, the worry is a different one. Without school, it is possible she won't get breakfast or lunch unless her mother moves quickly. Because for her, school not only means the shot at a different life than the one she has in a shelter with her mother, it is two of her daily meals.